Hello everyone, welcome back to Automation Talks and here I am with the, a third video which is continuation with my previous video 1 and 2 where I spoke about various methods to compare drop down values. Uh, in this particular part 3, uh, third video specifically I am going to talk about jQuery drop down. So the last couple of videos uh, we, we spoke about a very simple drop down which is a select standard HTML drop down. Uh, let's talk about how uh, you know we can compare the uh, drop down values from the jQuery drop down. Again, the URL remains same. Here, if you see the drop down number two and drop down number three, these are jQuery drop downs. Okay, uh, if you try to inspect them, okay, this is not a select drop down. In fact, I mean it is like written wrapper on top of select. So if you see for select, it is style display none, which is hidden. We cannot directly interact with this select. So what we need to do is we need to uh, I mean so my my end goal is I want to click uh, I mean I want to read all the values that are present over here inside the drop down. So as a human how I do I click and then I read all the values. So the same approach we are going to follow here. First we are going to perform the click operation. Second we are going to read the drop down values. Let's go to Eclipse and get started. Okay. I'm gonna copy this method okay and then I'm gonna do it here okay I'm I'll just comment out this and say jQuery jQuery drop down so first test I have commented this method will not get executed because I have written test annotation here this method will get executed now when I run it as test ng test okay so expected values are going to be uh, 1 to 19 okay let me write it and then I'll, I'll be needing a locator you know to perform the click operation on this and then you know the locator to read all these values okay let's let's go ahead and write a locator to perform the click on this okay and this is a span here this is a label this is select is hidden you see nothing is happening this is a span where I need to click okay and here you see which is having ID number button okay so I don't need in fact to write xpath I just need to perform the click where ID is equal to number button let's go to Eclipse okay so expected list I'll just update it uh, I'm gonna launch and then we don't really need this okay so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna perform the click operation driver dot find element by ID which is this and then I'm gonna perform the click operation okay so this will perform the click and I'll just give a delay of you know uh, a second or two second just to make sure that you know um, it does not fail due to the timing so I'll just give a delay of two second Again, if this is a proper framework, then this this could have been taken care of inside a click operation or inside you know the the drop down read operation. We need not to write it explicitly over here. Now this select will not work here. I'm gonna remove it. Now uh, this this line will perform the click operation. Once I perform the click, uh, I want to read the values all these values. If I inspect this, okay, all these values are present into this li which are present into this ul so under this ul as well they are present inside this div right so i'll start my xpath from here okay so i'll say double slash star where id is equal to this double slash li which is giving me 19 suggestion double slash div okay which is again giving me the 19 suggestion so this will give me all the values if you see 5 6 7 8 9 10 and it is giving me all the values so I'm gonna use this common X path and now I want to find all the elements so instead of using driver dot find element I'm gonna use driver dot find elements find elements by dot X path okay this is my X path and uh, okay. Now this will return me a list of web element. I'll just say list of web element. Let's say ELE list. 
is equal to this okay I have got list of web element now from my first program or oh sorry the second video uh, this remains same whatever expected values I have here uh, I'm gonna split them I'm gonna trim them sort them and add it into a list okay in the second case instead of using this OS dot get option and if you see here this get options was returning you a list of web element now in this case list of web elements is present into ELE list that is the only difference the rest other things will rem remain same so instead of this you know OS dot get options I'm gonna use ELE list and that's pretty much the rest other things will remain same and this program will work okay meanwhile I'll just pause the video for a minute and I'll write all these expected values okay so I have all these values updated that I see in the drop down now if I run this uh, you know program it should work as is I don't see any issues let's see and here you see it has clicked on this number jQuery drop down and anyway I didn't write you know logic to close it but that's okay I'm more interested into you know going to console and then you see compare failed ah okay from where it is getting this expected values give me a second expected str is this element list is this number menu expected values oh, oh sorry my bad I didn't saved it you see my save button is still enabled I didn't saved it my bad let me run it again okay you see it has clicked and now it must be reading the values and it has closed okay and you see the drop down values are as expected what I'm gonna do is let me add one more value as let's say 20 now I'm expecting let's say I'm expecting a value 20 and assuming that this 20 value is missed into the application and let's see if my code works okay uh, it has launched clicked and here you see compare fail expected values are this and the actual values are this now the reason why you see these numbers are not in you know order what I have given or what you what you have you know what are there in the um, drop down because we have used this sorted operation okay if you remove the sorted operation probably you will be able to see a numbers into how you have inputted let's see okay you see 1 to 20 and 1 to 19 <coughs> now why are you sorting because sometimes it is really important when we keep updating the data generally we tends to you know update the values at the end of the uh, you know the statement so that's the reason I prefer using sorted if it is not required probably you can go ahead and remove it now the second approach again one more thing you know if you if you if you are sure uh, like uh, you know your drop down contains unique values obviously the drop down will contain unique values so instead of using you know a list you know you can go ahead and you can use a set operation over here anyway it will not make much difference so it will just you know uh, you need to change the type of uh, you know expected values to set instead of list and then the collector will collect to set okay and that's pretty much okay and the the you know the logic is gonna work exactly as it is but the difference is in this case instead of using you know a list of uh, string we have used a set of string and we know that set will always store a unique value and as a drop down it is always expected that it will have a unique value so this could be you know your another use case if I run it it is gonna work I'm pretty sure uh, okay so that's pretty much okay <coughs> and even on this particular example okay so this is the same jQuery drop down and if you talk about this multi select drop down right if you want to verify uh, you know the options in the multi select drop down 
it is again going to be one and the same thing the only difference is going to be whether it is a single simple drop down or a jquery drop down or you know any other kind of fancy drop downs or a multi select drop down whatever kind of drop down it is our most important point is how are we gonna get the list of web element out of it if it is simple html drop down the get options uh, uh, os dot get options will give you a list of web element if it is not then you need to perform the click operation get the find elements method and write up xpath that will list all the elements that you need that's the only difference okay so with this i think i have covered whatever uh, you know i wanted to as a part of this various methods to compare the drop down using selenium there could be some other approaches as well let me know if you find any other approach better but i generally tend to use you know this uh, whatever i have covered in part 2 and part 3 we can make it very you know beautiful in the report it all depends on how you customize your report how you have your reporting logic but we, in our, in our case we have just printed it but it can be like written you know in more beautiful way okay i think that's pretty much guys uh, thanks for watching this video uh, we'll see you soon in the next video thank you